praise the lord i welcome you all in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ hallelujah it's good to see you all once again god has been so good for us even though the situations is in fair for many of us we've seen many unfair situations many challenges especially in this year 2020 may not be a pleasant year for many of us but god is still good and i surely and boldly say this he is in control over our situations he is in control over everything close your eyes we're going to submit ourselves submit the rest of the moment in the mighty hand of god When the hand of the God come up you come up on your life he will turn around situations God turn around not the guy situations when the hand of God come up on your life he will turn around situations you will witness supernatural things close your eyes seek the presence of the Lord Let the God fill His mighty presence wherever you are praying. Join with us with one accord. Let us all lift the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Oh welcome His presence. His presence is sweet. His presence is powerful. His presence will change things in your life. Oh yes. Let His presence shift your situation. How many of you want a shift in your life? as we are standing in the last days of this year 2020 how many of you want a shift in your life i need a shift in my career i need my shift in my relationship i need a shift in my health in his presence there is no fear he's going to cast out every fear hallelujah praise be to your name lord full is once again we just want to submit and surrender ourselves spirit of god strengthen us yes lord is not by power not by might but by the spirit but by the spirit by the but by the spirit said the lord we failed many times by our might by our strength lord jesus but we want to confess and declare this afternoon as we are approaching the end of this year we want to confess this lord we failed but by by your spirit it is possible but by your spirit it is possible help us to overcome help us to overcome lord jesus you called us as a overcomer conquerors help us to conquer every battles that we are facing every challenges that we are facing right now help us to conquer lord jesus because in you and with you we are more than a conquerors thank you lord oh jesus welcome holy spirit are in your presence and can you all sing it once again fill us with your power live inside of me live inside of me can you all sing it together church welcome holy spirit oh yes we are in your presence we are in your presence Lord, you fill us with your power. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Come on, just can we come again? Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Lord 
every hand lifted high. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone. God inside you. Oh God, live inside of me. Dwell inside of me. Dwell inside my family. Lord Jesus. Oh, oh what a poor of God. Oh, it's bringing deliverance. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, live inside of me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Live inside of me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, worship. Worship. Thank you. Live inside of me. Forever, forever. From 
the rising to the setting sun. His love endures forever. By the grace of God, we carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Forever, God is with us forever, 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 God is faithful, forever, God is strong, forever, God is with us forever. mighty mighty God we serve forever he is faithful forever he is strong what an amazing amazing God we serve thank you Jesus Lord we worship you this afternoon for that we worship you this morning Lord thank you so much for everything for everything you do for us Father God we are here submitting completely into your hands Father just here just to give this full worship and full praise to your name Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Christmas approaches Jesus Lord we just want to say thank you Father God we celebrate Christmas Jesus your birth you being born everything Father God that you have done for us you are come Lord hark the herald of the angels sing glory to the newborn King Jesus we worship you we adore you Father God thank you Jesus
loving amazing heavenly father father god lord jesus holy spirit we just want to commit everything into your hands lord and just we pray for your hand over this meeting father, over the sunday service thank you for everything you do please speak to us lord through your word in the mighty mighty name of jesus we pray amen 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 praise the lord it's good to see you all once again Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time God is good. We are standing in the last days of this year. Uh, he has brought you and me thus far. Hallelujah. The 2020 was a challenging year for many of us around the world. But I can surely say, I can boldly confess, God brought you and me thus far. We are standing in the last days of the 2020. God is so good. I can only say He's amazing is amazing his ways are amazing his grace is amazing and God's ways are powerful in our life uh, give all the glory to the Lord. I want to uh, run through a few quick announcements. Uh, we do have our Bi Bible study every Friday, and uh, we have our Christmas uh, family gatherings on December 19th at half 10 uh, at the church premises, and we have our Christmas service 25th, 8 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, come and let us worship Him, celebrate the birth of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us all celebrate the birth of Jesus. Come 25th December, 8 o'clock, we have our Christmas service and we have our uh, Thanksgiving service. Every year, last Sunday of the year, we observe that Sunday as a Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, so coming uh, 27th December uh, is a Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Off 6, we have our uh, Thanksgiving service. Come with a testimony. Sing praise, hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord. Bring your Thanksgiving offering, hallelujah. It is a time to give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember the goodness of the God in your life. Remember the promises of the God that He fulfilled in your life. Even though this time, even though 2020 is not a pleasant year for many of us, but God has been so good to us. He has been faithful. The one who called you is faithful. Hallelujah. Until the end, He is faithful God. Uh, bring your testimonies. Uh, uh, 27th of December, that is your time. Bring your testimonies. Bring your uh, Thanksgiving offering. That is the day of Thanksgiving. Come, let us all rejoice and give thanks to the Lord. And we have our watch night uh, uh, service, watch night service, uh, New Year Eve, uh, 31st of December, uh, 10 p.m. We have our watch night New Year service. So please do come, make your available for all these uh, meetings. Uh, let us all pray and meditate on the word of the Lord before we approach the new year, the new season. Let us all submit ourselves. Let us all examine our ways. Let us all submit ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Pray before Him. We want to uh, go stronger. We want to go stronger and bolder into the new season in the name of the Lord. And uh, this is a time to listen to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is all powerful. The word of the Lord is mighty. Hallelujah. It is a, a double-edged sword. It will give you deliverance. Uh, let us all uh, hear the word of the Lord with an expectation. When the Lord comes, when the, when the Lord speaks uh, the word out of his mouth, it will not come. Hallelujah. For come back void. So it will fulfill the very purpose, what God has purposed in your life. The word is coming to you. Take heed to the word of the Lord. Let us all be receptive to the word of the Lord. Here comes uh, Pauline Matthews uh, to share the word. Let us all put our hands together. Welcome, uh, Pauline Matthews. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad to be in your presence. I'm glad to share the word of God. As pastor said, this is a time of uncertainties. You know, the last few months, or I would say most of this year had been so uncertain. And uh, you know what? We have been uh, seeing a lot of things that we don't even know. We don't even understand. We don't even uh, uh, comprehend what's happening. But the Lord has been so good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think many of you can agree with me. The Lord has been so good to us. Hallelujah. When the presence of God, I pray that the presence of God, even as you hear this voice, even as you hear this word, I pray the presence of God will come into your houses. And I pray the word of God will come straight to your souls and it will revive your spirits. Hallelujah. This month, the Lord has given us this promise from Luke chapter 149. He that is mighty has done great things. Hallelujah. The mighty God has done great things and this is the prayer and this is the praise that Mary has uh, given uh, when, she, when she heard the good news of Jesus Christ being conceived in our womb and she praises God in that time of uncertainty. What a confession she makes. She makes a confession to say that the one who is mighty has done great things for me. Hallelujah. And I see this as a as a worship I see this as a certainty you know is she's sure of though she was you know Mary was when she heard the message that Jesus Christ will be conceived in our womb by the Holy Spirit that's a very uncertain situation you know what? She's not yet married. She doesn't know what. This is something new. It hasn't happened before. And in her time, she's just a virgin, just a young girl in our community and in our city of Nazareth. And she hears this message from the angel, which is not an usual happening. We don't see angels every day talking to us. But in those days when, when it was something unusual, very, very, uh, very much uncertain, and she hears this message, which is not a comforting message, which is not a comforting or, a, you know, a message that would uh, just make us fa make her famous. She hears a word that says that, look, Mary, you're just a virgin, but you're going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit, not by a man, not by a husband. You're not yet married, but you're going to be conceived and you're going to have a child even before you get married. And this is a word that actually troubles. It's not not a comforting word it's a troubling word but in that uncertainty Mary was able to worship the Lord Mary was able to make uh, an assured confession he that is mighty has done great things hallelujah he that is mighty has done great things is a is a word of affirmation it is a word of confirmation she's confirmed she hasn't yet seen you know it is still very un uncertain she hasn't seen anything but she's strong. She's already praising God. And you know what? That is the beauty. And as I was meditating on this promise, this promise is very close to my heart. And, and you know, the moment I heard, I, I received the word of God straight away. And I know that God is going to do such a mighty thing because he's a mighty God and he's going to do wonderful thing for us this, this month. And uh, as I was meditating on this, God gave me this word of a certain God. This came to my mind. It said that a certain God in uncertainties. Hallelujah. We have a God who is certain in uncertainties. Hallelujah. That is the title of the message. A certain God. He is a confirmed, he is an assured God. A certain God in uncertainties. Hallelujah. So what does it mean? What does it mean is, are we trusting God? Can we trust? God when there is uncertainties, when you're not sure what the future holds, when you're, when you, maybe you, you know what, it's easy to start when you have received the word because the faith uh, operates and then you have received the word, you're excited. So therefore, it's easy to start in the beginning. And then when you're at crossroads, when you're uh, stuck in a place and you don't know what's next and you don't know who to approach and you don't know what's happening and how do I do this? How, where would I turn to? Who's going to provide for me? Who's going to speak for me? Where will I get the money? What, where is my provision? 
when you come at the crossroads and you don't know what to do so that is uncertainty and we have a certain god that's the good news i want to tell you this month my dear people of god we have a certain god in our uncertainties hallelujah yes we all face uncertainties no one can say that you know what i know where i'm going i know what i'm doing no one can say that but you know what still every one of us every one of us even the people who are watching me everyone can you know relate with me how uncertain the situation can be you know uh, we all face uncertainties but in the midst of uncertainties what we, what can i do you know what what can i do yes I don't know what's holding tomorrow what I have for tomorrow I don't know what God's plan over my life I don't know how about my children I don't know about my future I don't know how I'm going to buy a house I don't know which house I'm going to buy I don't know whether I will get a child am I going to be barren forever you know what is what is my future when you're in the peak of uncertainties there's one thing god is asking you to do god is asking you to trust him hallelujah that's a challenge you know what that's not easy when god says that you know what when you don't see anything when you don't hear anything when you don't know what to do can you trust me hallelujah so the first thing i'm going to i'm going to speak upon is trusting god when you don't see god's plan or when you don't see what's ahead of you so how can you trust you know what in genesis chapter 12 we see that jesus god calls abraham and in verse 1 it says the lord said to abra abram go from your country your people and your father's house to the land i sh- i will show you i will make you a great nation i will make your name great i will bless you and you know what he says all these things but he never gives a plan he doesn't see all that you know abraham he heard god's voice he heard god's instruction that he said abram leave this place i'm going to bless you i'm going to bring you to another land but he doesn't know where he is going because he hasn't seen you know what this is a time where you haven't seen anything but you have to trust god are you able to trust god when you don't see anything when you don't see god's plan so the first point is trusting god when you don't see anything and you know what in verse 4 of the same chapter 12 genesis it says it's a very very beautiful thing he just said in few words you know it says so abram went as the lord had told him hallelujah what a beautiful verse it's very easily said but are we can we do that you know what when you don't know if if our parents or our friends say let's go somewhere you know what a, 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 a real trail of questions would follow where are we going when are we going what place how but you know what abraham had a calling to leave his father's house everything that belonged he was in a comfortable place i'm sure he was in a very he was in his comfort zone but when god called him he didn't see anything he didn't have a map he didn't have google he didn't have um, even a blueprint or even a word or even a picture you know where he is going but abraham trusted god and that's what we see that abraham trusted god and that was considered as righteousness for him and you know that's the beauty when when you don't see anything when you don't see god's plan can you trust him hallelujah because when you trust him the word says that jesus is the way the truth and life we don't see anything but can you trust him hallelujah that is the challenge we have when we don't know what's next we always get confused because we don't know what's happening next next because i don't see anything you know what i i know i want to buy a house but i don't see anything i know i want to have a child but i don't see anything but when you don't see anything you know it's very easy for us to be anxious to be you know frustrated you know become uh, you know confused but word says but god is calling us this month you know as mary said we have to make a faith confession the mighty one will do great things for me so that does nothing but trusting god when i don't see anything thing hallelujah when i don't see anything i want to trust god hallelujah so the next point is trusting god when you don't know what to do hallelujah there are times i'm sure every one of us will can relate with me 
there maybe you would have heard something from god but you don't know what to do you know what i know i have to study i know i have to get married but how do i do that you know where do i go for it trusting god when you don't know what to do hallelujah and this i see uh, very beautifully in the life of job we see that in the first book first chapter of job this is very beautiful you know what job was a person who was trusting god and he was completely dependent on god and you know what all of a sudden job hears one message after another message saying that you know what his children died his wealth has gone his possession has gone and you know what by the end of uh, by the end of uh, the chapter you know we see that he has lost everything and job would have you know puzzled because the word says that he 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 rose up early in the morning and he made sacrifices for his children and in the same day in verse 13 it says and there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house and then in verse 14 it says that there came a messenger and he says that you know what all our oxen and our cattle you know what they all have been taken they they were they were taken away from us and while he was yet speaking there came another person and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and it had burned the sheep and the and it had consumed everything and in verse 17 while he was yet speaking there came an another and then he said the chaldeans made out their way and fell upon the camels and everything got carried away and in verse 18 while he was yet speaking there came an another and said thy thy sons and their daughters they were all killed they were all um, killed and they are dead so we see that by by verse 20 he has lost everything he has completely lost his except his wife he had lost all his possession all his sons daughters everything is gone and he doesn't know what to do you know what he's puzzled imagine yourself in that kind of a situation while he, while one person is yet talking he hears another bad news when he was still talking he hears another bad news and another bad news and then by verse 20 he has lost everything but you know what he does very beautifully in verse 20 he says then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head fell down upon the ground and worshiped and he said something very beautiful he said the lord gave and the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord in all these things job sin not not charge god foolishly hallelujah in all these things the word says he did not curse god he did not murmur he wasn't frustrated he wasn't giving out he wasn't annoyed over what had happened he literally lost everything in a day how hopeless it would feel how frustrated how uncertain he's puzzled he doesn't know what to do lord what will i do he didn't even say those words in his mouth but he said the lord gave and the lord took it you know what and i worship the lord the word says that he worship the lord how beautiful it is blessed be the name of the lord in all this job sin not hallelujah trusting god when you don't know what to do at least abraham and joseph we see that you know what at least they heard god saying go to this place i'm going to take you to a land and i'm going to bless you i'm going to bless your generation abraham he- heard that and joseph also heard the words that you know it he even had a dream about his future but in the case of job he doesn't even know what to do because he has no clue and worse is that he was trusting god he even made sacrifices for his sons and daughters rising early in the morning and then the next day he hears the news that everything is gone how how frustrating how uncertain it was he didn't know what to do but he did not run around looking for his friends looking for his family looking for his brothers looking for his sisters he did not put put them up in his whatsapp status He did not tell them in this in the Facebook. He did not go around murmuring. He did not go around cursing God. He did not go around talking about what he had lost. But the word says that he rose up and he fell down upon the ground and he worshiped. 
and he said blessed be the name of the lord can you and me do that trusting god when you don't know what to do hallelujah we have a certain god who is certain he is not changing he is a certain god in times of uncertainties situations change but the beauty of a father beauty of a god is situations will not change my god but my god changes the situation that is the power of his presence that is the power of his word when his presence comes into your situation the situation will not alter the alter my god but my god is able my god is all certain my god is all powerful is a sovereign god is all powerful he changes your situation he changes your uncertainties into a certain time Hallelujah. So the third one is when you don't know how long. Trusting God when you don't know how long. You know what is easy even even in the case of Noah. He built the ark for 100 years and then he he uh, followed God's instructions. He took his family, he took all the cattle, he took whatever the Lord instructed. He did. And he got inside the ark and the Lord shut the door of the ark. and in genesis 7 it says and they were all you know what and it started raining for 40 days 40 nights and there was flood upon the face of earth but for noah in verse uh, chapter 7 of genesis verse 4 it says for eight forty days and i will cause it upon cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and every living substance that i have made i will destroy from off the face of the world so here god gives them an instruction so for noah and his wife and his family they would have understood as so for 40 nights and 40 days it's going to rain and after 40 days and 40 nights the rain is going to stop and we'll be out you know that's that's what they they would have understood But the word says that you know what after 40 days and 40 nights the rain stopped but the water did not decrease from the face of the world uh, earth and it says that they stayed inside the ark for 80 days 100 days 120 200 300 nearly 400 days they were inside the ark as a family with everything that god had instructed them when they don't know how long they did not know that it's going to take nearly 400 days they thought the instruction the word that they heard from god is 40 days and 40 nights of rain and after 40 days and 40 days uh, nights of rain the rain stopped but they didn't even imagine because they have not seen flood before they have not seen rain before so they didn't they don't even know how long they're going to be inside the ark so for their understanding they would have easily thought maybe after 40 days we will be out of the ark and we will come out and have life outside the ark but they never would have imagined they'll be inside the ark for nearly 400 days but when you don't know so the point now is when you don't know how long can you trust god when god has said that you know what i'm going to give you a child but you don't know how long it's going to take you don't know how many days it's going to take you don't know how many years you need to wait for it but are you able to trust god when you don't know how long abraham and sarah were promised by god to get to get a child but both of them didn't know how long they had to wait and abraham waited for so long that he had his child only at the age of 100 and sarah was already 90 years and when you don't know any you know you know when he when he had his child finally at the age of 100 until he reached the, the the time between this the promise and receiving the promise there were nearly you know so nearly uh, nearly 25 30 years he had to wait and that time that many years he was trusting god and that's why the word says that abraham trusted god in the face of uncertainty in hebrews we see that you know what there was no clue he was clueless how and when he is going to get a child are you able to trust god when you don't know how long hallelujah we have a god who is certain 
no matter how long it takes when he has given you a word he will bring it to pass hallelujah and that's why mary are we able to confess like mary a mighty one has done great things for me he is a mighty god no matter how long it takes you know what god can give you next year if he has promised a child for you he can give you the very next year because my god is able the god that you and me we believe he is a god who can give that the very next year but even this process during this process of waiting he prepares you he prepares you he molds you he prepares you for the blessing that you're going to receive he's seeing whether you are able to trust him when you don't know how long hallelujah we have a great god and noah built his ark and he said that he he nearly built it for 100 years and you and me we need to build a hope we need to build our faith in times of uncertainties we need to build may the word says that people in the times of noah they mocked him they made fun of him because he said look i'm building an ark because god told me so and there's going to be rain on the face of the earth and there's going to be flood that's going to destroy the earth and people in his in his time they really mocked noah and for noah imagine he had to first he needs to trust god and he had to convince his wife and his children to and his in law in i mean daughter in laws as well to convince to get to trust god which is very difficult when you are the only one to trust when you are the only one who have received the word of god it's very difficult to trust and you need to convince your partner you need to convince your spouse and your children to trust god in the face of uncertainty because they have never seen flood they don't know what flood is but noah was not questioning god noah didn't want to know when how you know what noah was not questioning god noah just trusted god he didn't even know what flood is himself but he trusted the word of god and he didn't even know how and when is going to happen how long he's going to be inside the ark he doesn't know how long but he trusted god hallelujah when you're clueless when you're puzzled when you're frustrated how long because i waited for so long god told me that i will uh, he will give me a house god told me that he will give me a good job god told me that my son will come back my daughter will change my daughter's life will change my marriage will change but how long when when you don't know how long when you don't know when trust god hallelujah trusting god when you don't know when hallelujah and the last one trusting god when you don't understand hallelujah we are living in a generation where we want to understand things we want to know how as if you know what we understand we can understand everything our comprehension is very very small but with this small understanding we want to understand everything we are living in a, such a time that everybody wants to know how you know why we want to understand you know why you want to know more about it in order to gain control when i know more about it when i know something about it i will gain control over it and that's the reason this generation is looking for understanding and they want to understand they want to know what it is but you know what the the promise of god the work of his hands his promises and how he executes no one can understand it's it's beyond comprehension is beyond human understanding we see this incident in second kings chapter 17 so there is famine in the land and these people are struggling there is no food absolutely no food and people are struggling the king is struggling everybody is puzzled they don't know they can't understand how to do this they are in such a time of uncertainty and we see in verse uh, verse 1 then elisha said hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of samaria so this is the word of the lord through his prophet elisha 
he says look it's very uncertain there is no food it's 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 a complete famine in the land and people are struggling they are even killing their children they don't know what to do it's complete uncertainty they don't know where the food is going to come it's complete dryness and here the word of god comes to his people saying like you know what tomorrow there's going to be a there's going to be plenty of food today there's no food but tomorrow he says there's going to be plenty of food and how plenty is that a measure of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel shekel is very less it's like getting huge amount of food for very less like a euro and and you know what the man who was with king as soon as he heard this word it was so surprising for him he couldn't even understand so he says a word behold if the lord would make windows in heaven might this thing be he's is immediately trying to understand how 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 things can happen how does this happen even if the whole uh, you know what heaven is open and god pours out his treasures this cannot happen he's trying to understand so that he can gain control over the situation and that's what you and me we are doing we want to understand we want to understand everything but the work of god the word says it is it is not understandable it is beyond comprehension how god does it we don't know and that's what we see in matthew the seed is buried inside the soil and we sleep but when you sleep and you wake up we see the seed has already sprouted and how does that happen we don't know that's what matthew says that's what we see in that proverb about seeds how the seeds sprouts out we don't know and how god does miracles we don't know we can't understand and don't even try to understand don't even try to understand uh, that how it happens because it's a miracle miracles cannot be understood and the man who was with king he said something you know uh, i regret for him to say that he said how this could happen it's not possible in a way he's saying how, how how is this possible it's not possible at all he's trying to understand how is this possible but later in the uh, chapter we see that the lord answered the man of god and uh, you know what so the the lepers they go out to the camp of uh, syrians and there they have found huge amount of food silver and gold and you know what in the, as you read when if you have time just read this chapter of 7 we see god has already done a miracle he he has already uh, made a huge noise uh from the country and the samarians you know what they thought that um the people of uh, the people are coming against them and they have already fled the camp leaving all their belongings leaving all their possessions the food the wealth silver gold everything they have just left it and ran away for their life and these lepers who went there they just want to go and find out what's there they want to go and find out if there is any food and there they find a huge amount of treasures of food and wealth and these people they said look this is the day the lord has made and therefore we need to go and inform the king so these people go and inform the king and the people of samaria they went and they saw and as the word says and in verse 19 it says exactly has as um, sorry in verse 18 it says exactly how the man of god has spoken it happened there was plenty of food yesterday was famine but today it was plenty of food you know there were there was plenty of food and the man who questioned how it would happen we see that in the last verse in verse 20 and it says that you will only see but you will not you will not eat he was only able to see when he said that so it fe- it fell out of him for the people trod upon him in the gate and he died he was able to see but he was not able to enjoy the blessing because he was trying to understand he was trying to understand the work of god but the miracles the work of god cannot be understood 
Are we ready to trust God when you don't understand? Hallelujah. When you can't make sense of it. When you, you can't really make sense. The words that David writes, I don't even know how the bones are formed in the womb of a mother. How it is formed. How a child is formed inside the womb. We don't even know. But in times of, in times where you can't understand, are you able to trust God? Hallelujah. So that is, that is, that is very important. Are you able to understand? Are you able to trust God when you don't understand? Hallelujah. And a lot of uncertainties, what happens is there is a fear inside you. Satan is very clever to put the fear inside you when it's, when it's uncertain. You don't know. You don't know. So there's four things we saw today. Are you able to trust God when you don't see God's plan? Are you able to trust God when you don't know what to do? Are you able to trust God when you don't know how long? Are you able to trust God when you don't understand things? Hallelujah. I don't see, but I trust God. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to trust God. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to trust God. I don't understand. I don't have a clue. I don't have control over the situation because I don't even understand. How am I going to have a child? I don't understand, but I'm going to trust God. How am I going to buy a house? I don't know, but I don't understand, but I'm going to trust God. Hallelujah. God is expecting you to trust Him in times of uncertainty because we have a certain God. Hallelujah. He's certain. There's, there's always assurance. And that's why in Philippians 4, chapter 6, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the next verse is very important. Because in every situation, there is troubles, there's trials, there's temptations, there's uncertainties. Where you can't even do anything. Lord, I can't do anything because it's beyond my control. There's limitations. Every one of us, human beings, for everything that we do and speak, there is limitations. But for a God, the God that you and me, we serve a God who is beyond limits. He's omnipotent. He's, he's able to do everything beyond that you even dream, that you even ask for. So therefore, the Lord says in Philippians chapter, chapter 4, verse 6, be careful for anything, but in every situation, but in everything, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And in verse 7, when you do that, the verse 7 says, The peace of God, which surpasses, surpasses all understanding, shall keep your mind and heart through Christ Jesus. Because there is assured peace. Hallelujah. God gives you peace in times of uncertainties. I don't know. Hallelujah. It's very uncertain. I don't see, but I'm going to trust God. Will you say this? Will you say this in your heart? Speak to your soul. I'm going to trust God when I don't see anything. When I don't see His ways, I know, when I don't see His plan, I'm going to trust God. Speak to yourself. Confess it. I'm going to trust God when I don't know what to do. I'm going to trust God I do, when I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm going to trust God when I don't understand. So when, when you do this, a peace of God will come into your heart and He will give you peace in every uncertainty because our God is a certain God. He's not a man to lie. He's not a man to change His mind. When He has said so, He will do it. And let's confess like Mary, the mighty one has done great things for me. Hallelujah. Let's confess it and we're going to receive it this month. The mighty one, he's going to do great wonders in your lives, in your families. Hallelujah. We have to be thankful for what the Lord has done in our lives. Yes, it is uncertain, but I'm going to trust him. Yes, I don't understand. Yes, I don't have a control over situation. I can't even understand. Therefore, I can't control. It's beyond my control. But I'm going to trust God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful word. Lord, yes, Master, we are seeing uncertainties. There's uncertainties in our children's lives. There is uncertainty in our jobs. There's uncertainties in our marriages, in our daily routines. Father, Lord, but God, we're going to trust you. 
Lord, we're going to trust you like Abraham. We're going to trust you like Job. We're going to trust you like Joseph. We're going to trust you like Mary. Father, we don't understand. And therefore, we have no control over our situations, Father God. But I'm going to trust you. My dear brothers and sisters, can you say this in your heart? Can you confess this? Father, I'm going to trust you because I have a God who is certain. And every word that you said, it will, pass, it will come into my life. It will not fail. You're, a, you're not a man to change your mind. You're not a man to change your word. And Father, I'm going to trust you, Lord. And I'm going to receive the blessings. I'm going to, do, I'm going to see your mighty works in my life. Father, we thank you, for Master God, for this wonderful word and we receive it. And Lord, help your people to trust you when they don't see your plan. Father, I pray for people who are listening to this voice. Lord, help them to trust you in the face of uncertainties when they don't know how long it's going to take. But Father, Lord, give him the courage, give him the trust, give him the faith, oh Father God. When they are puzzled, when they are in crossroads, Lord, when they are so uncertain, they don't know what to do. Lord, give them a heart to trust you. And Lord, we believe your word. We trust in you, O Master God. Lord, every work, of Father God, of yours is marvelous unto our eyes. As your word says, O Father God, your works are wonderful. Your works are marvelous. And Father, therefore, we welcome you into our presence in, in our situations. Lord, let your presence, O Father God, engulf us. In our situations, people who are watching me online, Father, I pray that your presence will touch them. Lord, in their houses, in their circumstances, in their situation, I pray, Father, Lord, let your presence come into their hearts, oh, Father God. Lord, change their situation, oh, Father God, beyond what they can ask, beyond what they can pray, beyond what they can dream of. Lord, let your presence, oh, Father God, it is supernatural presence. Lord, it is supernatural, oh, Father God. Everything is possible with you. And therefore, we trust you. Lord, be with your people. Bless them. Bless every work of your, their hands, O oh Father God. In every decision, O oh Master God, you be with them and you guide them. And Lord, as your word says, O oh Father God, that you will lead them. And as your word says, mercy and goodness shall follow them all the days of your life. They are not going to be running here and there looking for provisions. As your word says, your goodness and your mercy shall follow them. The blessings that you have for them will come in search of them, O oh Father God. My children, O oh Father God, they will not be running here and there. They will not be puzzled. They will not feel uncertain. They will not be frustrated. But they will be sure because we have a God who could be trusted. He's a faithful God. And therefore, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for coming into our presence, O oh Master God. Lord, I pray for people who are sick. Lord, I pray that your healing will touch them. Lord, I pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let their, let their infirmities, O oh Father God, be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, whoever is sick, I pray, O oh Father God, let them be healed by your name. Let them be healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we pray deliverance, O oh Master. God. Whoever is struggling, oh Master, I pray, oh Father God, let there be deliverance in the name of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them be delivered from their situation. Father, whoever is praying, oh Father God, we pray for their requests. Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. We pray with a grateful heart. And Lord, we confess like Mary did, oh Father God, the mighty one has done great things. And we are sure that you're going to do great things in our lives too, oh Master. We thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Be blessed, oh Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Be blessed. <laughs>